Hey folks, this is Dre from Cover One Drones. Today we're going to talk about how to use Litchi to get some cinematic looks from your camera. This is a few tips of what I've learned to use. So, as always, hang on, enjoy the ride, and please subscribe and leave a comment too. Thank you. First off, we're going to look at using the virtual Litchi program. I think it's one of the biggest assets when using Litchi altogether that you can pre-plan your flights before even leaving the house. You can use the virtual Litchi on either iOS or Android, preferably on your desktop. What you see here in front of you is a planned flight going down my street in my development and heading down to my home. One thing about using virtual Litchi, Litchi you can set as many waypoints up to 99 and you can adjust the height and if you use points of interest which we're going to use my house as the first point of interest which automatically tells the drone what direction to face and you can always always set the speed I initially set the speed of my drone at one miles per hour so it will slowly come into the house just like a reveal so you can, and the point of interest itself, you can adjust the height of the point of interest. As I'm lifting up on the drone here, the point of interest is only three feet high. So that's why when the drone lifts up, the camera automatically tilts down, looks back at the house itself as I'm pulling back away from it. The camera stays focused on the house. And that's how you can get one of those cinematic shots of a pull away by using the uh, litchi itself because it can maintain focus and direction on the subject that you want it at. Now we're going to kick over to a live view. And one thing I always try to tell people, especially new pilots, don't be afraid to fly slowly. I did this deliberately to make sure everything's going to remain in focus. I'm flying it with 100 ISO. Shutter speeds will range between 650 and 1000. And like I said, I'm back, I'm pulling back at one miles per hour. and it gives a nice cinematic feel to the pullback of, of this neighborhood to where it could be a closing shot or even an intro shot if I reverse the footage to where I was coming up on the house. Next, we're going to start heading towards our second point of interest here, which I live just across the street from a uh, commercial industrial area and railroad tracks. From that last uh, waypoint, which is my waypoint 13, going over to 14, I continue to fly at a slow pace. And the reason why I did this is this right here. I got lucky enough to catch some trains coming through and sometimes, just like people say, you can have a still camera and let the action happen in front of you. This is the same thought process here. I'm gradually moving and letting everything else happen in front of me. The vehicle's coming down the road, the train coming through. Now, as I said before, we're coming up on our second point of interest. Even though I'm catching all this other activity in front of my camera now, What's generally happened is the second point of interest is coming up and the camera is slowly creeping upwards to reveal the second point of interest. I'm going to let this play out a little bit and see how many of you notice it.
Now, several things are happening as we reveal the second point of interest, which is the rain tower on this dog food plant. I'm getting a wider view of the train tracks, the road, and now the grain tower comes into the picture, which is our second point of interest. And the camera slowly creeps up to reveal the rest of the valley that sits behind it. These are cinematic touches on shots. Now we hit our next waypoint. I'm going to speed the drone up to about nine miles per hour. Now planning this out, I'm able to do this because I know what I want to do because I'm very familiar with the area. A lot of times people have to do this in post to speed up the footage. And sometimes it may catch other un unrelated uh, items uh, unintentionally moving too fast. So you know the footage is being sped up or maybe even reversed. By me speeding the drone up, now I have created, I got the train coming through. I'm creating a parallax uh, motion with the, with the grain tire in the forefront and the rest of the scenery in the background moving. This was very for, tour, for tourists, for tourists for me, to have that train come through to give me a different type of movement while the drone is coming around. Now you notice how I started further back on the back side of the tower and I got closer as, it, as I had the drone come around to the front to reveal more details of the point of interest. Usually when people fly a orbit as a point of interest, they keep an equal rotation around the building. But using Litchi, you're able to put those waypoints a little bit closer to give you a different effect. And this is what I'm talking about right here. As I come around to the, to the I say the, the back side of, of the tower again, the drone is actually flying backwards at this point. And then gives me another reveal shot of another part of the valley towards the mountains. And then we start to come and complete our orbit. And so lucky enough, another train's coming back through. This adds another element into, into the frame. And usually the trains that come through my area are very long. A, a mile long train is not unusual. So flying only at nine miles per hour, I get plenty of train shot in here. Even as I'm start to transition to my third point of interest. You see how the drone is slowly pulling back away? And then I start my turn. All this flying very slow, nine miles per hour, not very fast, and it allows everything to stay relatively in focus. There's no great blur, and there's no great uh, jerkiness in the camera. Now here we go, our third point of interest is the solar farm. And you see how it is transitioned? And boom, now we're moving in another direction. And we start our third moment movement of a semi-orbit of this uh, solar farm. And the same thing here. I'm on this side, give myself a little distance, give a little context, context to the framing of it. You see the mountains in the background, the rest of the industrial area right behind it. And what I'm trying to grab here is let the panels create its own design, almost like taking pictures of a, a field of, field of uh, agriculture. You see the lines in the picture creating their own patterns. Maintain that small bit of horizon in the, in the backdrop. Not a whole lot of sky, they say about 25%. Now you notice I got those power lines over to my right side. 
I usually fly this area all the time, so I make sure I uh, clean it up. So I, I, I come in tight right here. I make sure my waypoints are a little tighter, which allows the camera now to get in a little closer. So now I've got same thing again with the tower. I've gave you two perspectives. I gave you a wide perspective. Now I'm giving you a close-up perspective. And the same technique I use on a tower I use here also. As the camera goes past the point of interest, you get that pattern again of the solar panels as it pulls away. Now one tip about using points of interest, you don't want them too close together. You want to be able to allow the drone to make a smooth transition from one point of interest to the next point of interest. You get them too close together, you'll get that jerky swing around motion. But having them spread out like this allows the drone to smoothly rotate around like I'm doing here. Nice smooth rotation, still only doing about nine miles per hour. And it's gonna be our fourth point of interest coming up. And there's that long train coming right back into our picture again. This gives you a shot of the power lines. Those power lines are 100 feet in the air. So that's why right now I'm at 160 feet to make sure I don't get any problems with the power lines. But I am descending as I come across the tracks. And this will give me a nice shot of the train passing by underneath me. So about 160 feet, by the time I come across the train, I'm at 78 feet and I'm still descending and the drone is still slowly rotating around back into the neighborhood. And by the time I get to the first house or so in the neighborhood, I'm down to 38 feet. Come here, when we left the neighborhood, we left at 160 feet. Big wide shot neighborhood, now I'm coming back in close. So I use the same technique at each point of interest. Gave you a, a, a wide shot, a more close in shot, and we finished this little trip with the same style that we started with. Hey, this is Recover One Drones, Ray Crawford. Thank you for tuning in. Hit the like button, it really helps out. Enjoy yourself, have a blessed day, fly safe, and, and please fly within the rules. Thank you.